Nancy Dunn, Rick. Good. All right. Uh, we have a great recipe. You're going to think, oh my gosh, not chard again, but chard is such a great ingredient. So we, we are going to talk about a lot about chard today. But as you can see on our spread here, we have beautiful, beautiful chard. And let me, I just cannot get over how gorgeous this is. It grows really tall and long. You can cut it when it's shorter. You can cut it when it's longer. And it's just gorgeous. And I love eating food that looks fantastic. So we're going to add this to a little beans for some protein and some garlic. And what else you got, Rick? Oh, we're even going to top it with lemon juice. So we're going to get Rick started cooking because we need to cook some stuff on the stove. And he's going to take, you have the um, olive oil back there heating yeah. up? Oh, we're going to put olive oil in the pan and then we're going to add garlic to it. And we are going to cook this until it starts to sizzle, about one minute. Here you go. So I'm just going to keep passing things to him and give him instructions. How's that, Rick? That's perfect. Perfect. Okay. So I have to tell you all about this chard while we're cooking because how you're going to do this is you, we cut it up into little pieces. The chard has such great um, nutritional value. It grows fantastic on the towers. Our towers are doing so well. We've actually are start, we disassembled one that we're going to start growing some lettuces on and we're going to start taking progress pictures. But the towers look fantastic. And we're starting to come to the end of our growing season outside. But I read that I could start a whole nother batch of seeds. So that's what we're going to do out there while our tomatoes go until October. I mean, sometimes it's the beginning of November, depending on the weather. So um, the inside tower came down because we're going to add stuff to the outside tower. And we are looking fantastic on that. So our recipe here, he has got his... Um, garlic sizzling back there. He's going to let me know when it starts sizzling because I'm going to hand him. He did the stems of the chard. He cut it into tiny pieces. Let me hand it to you. Normally we wouldn't cut them that small, but you have to remember we're cooking on a cooking show. And we want them to cook a little faster. I probably would have sliced them a little bit bigger, but because of the cooking show, we want them to kind of be a little bit quicker. And you don't want to be on our Facebook page for, you know, like two hours today. So anyway, um, we are going to cook those. That's going to take about, I don't know, maybe five minutes because they're nice and small. Normally five to six minutes. Um, so while that's cooking, I have to finish telling you about our chart because I do a little research on the nutritional value when we do this. And what I'm finding is, we all know that the dark leafy greens are the best for us, but man, you know, kale, it, it really has a good punch of um, vitamins and minerals in that, but so does Swiss chard. This happens to be called rainbow chard. It's the same thing as Swiss chard. It's just because it has color. I prefer to grow the color just because it looks so beautiful and I love colors on the tower. So it's very, very low in calories. It's high in magnesium, iron, um, potassium, vitamins A, C, and K. What more could you want? So we're going to dress this up with some beans and, well, we have the garlic in there. And then we're going to serve this on toast. And what they told us to do is to use a rustic bread. So we choose sourdough for that. And I want to tell you, we have our sourdough starter going on the counter because we are going to do a sourdough show with some more and there you can see we're cutting the, the uh, chard off but um just cut anywhere from the back of the plant and it will refurbish and it will just keep growing more and more we have even more chard out there from what we pulled today okay rick how yeah. are we doing you think you need some leaves yet i think we're almost there okay yeah. sorry for turning my back i'm checking on the boss back there to see yeah. if he's okay we're so what he did is he just cut the leaves up for me this morning and we have all this beautiful color. He chose more of the red. I'm curious to see if the red disappears while it's cooking because sometimes when you cook these vegetables with all these beautiful colors, they do disappear some of the color. So he's going to cover that. We're going to let that heat mm, two to three minutes. But the big thing with the chart is we throw this in our salads 
especially these red stems because they have great color and you just can't beat that color on there. So um, what do you think, Rick? You're looking forward to tasting this one? Yeah, this looks like a good one. Okay. So later today, we, we've been, we got a lot going on with the towers. We pulled a bunch of basil. We have to make our pesto today because the basil was ready. I'm hoping to do another batch live, but it, it was ready and, and we already got it halfway done. We're going to be canning tomatoes today. I don't know if we can do a canning show actually on here to get it done fast enough, but we'll try next week. And then... Um, We'll try to squeeze in some basil ideas because that's a pretty simple recipe to do. And we just jar that up and put it in the freezer. So, but today is all about chard and all of its beautiful color and its great nutrition. And Rick, what do we need to add? The beans? Okay. So now what we have here is a can of beans and I chose like the light, the white kidney beans. And that just is gonna give us a protein punch in there. Okay, you're gonna go ahead and add that and heat that up. Did you add salt when you added? Yeah, okay. When he added the leaves, we were supposed to sprinkle a little salt in there. He did it, but I didn't tell you. So uh, we're just trying to catch up with each other. Juice. Uh, the juice. Oh, okay. So when we drain the beans, we save some of that juice. If you don't want to use the uh, juice from the beans, just use a half a cup of water because we're only adding a half a cup for it to get all nice and tender oh can you hear that i hope you guys can hear that because it sounds wonderful just cooking over there oh look at that i'm watching it on the camera and i'm like wow i can't wait to taste this how's it doing okay so what we did is we have a piece of toast here and when he brings that over i don't want to move this because we're going to have it on the camera we're going to drizzle some olive oil on it we're gonna put some salt and pepper and then we're going to add the lemon oh here yeah, you want to use this oh, there you go. look at us go and just pile your toast with this oh look at this i want some more beans in there we'll do it oh my gosh okay now we're gonna close that up we have to drizzle some olive oil on i don't even think i want to do that I'm going to cheat and not add more olive oil, guys. Sorry. We're going to add a little salt and pepper that I just took a, like a teaspoon of kosher salt and put some pepper in here, mixed it up. And I use that all the time like that when I'm cooking. And then we're going to take a lemon and drizzle that on there. This is what's going to really finish it. Look at that, Rick. It looks good. Oh, my gosh. Well, I don't think we've tried anything like this. So, all right. Shall I feed you or you'll feed yourself? You know what? You might want to pick yeah. that up. That we that rustic bread is so good and crunchy that I'm not going to pre-cut that. I'm going to have them bite into it. Oh, no. Down. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Leave it to Rick to man down. Okay. We say man down around here and we drop things. So okay, Rick, now try it without dropping it. Third kind's a charm. Oh. <laughs> The, the dogs are gonna like the beans on the floor. Here, the cleanup crew is down there cleaning up for us. That's very good. Very good. Okay. Once again, when we do garlic, we don't do the full amount in the recipe, but we cut it back by one garlic clove. It called for three. Do you think it needed the extra one? No. Mmm. Mmm. You're getting an mmm. -mm. <laughs> He's walking away because he's got his fingers so messy. So we only use the two garlic cloves. The recipe calls for three. And we eliminated the last drizzle of the olive oil. When I went to drizzle that, it looked so moist and fresh that I didn't think it needed the extra drizzle. But it definitely needs the lemon. Okay, so do not forget the lemon on there. So what do you think? Slam dunk? Oh, that's another good one. Oh, see, I get a high five before the end of the show here. Okay, guys. So remember, chard is as, almost as good of a nutritional punch as kale. We all know kale's the king. But when you can get something so beautiful like this and cook it, and it grows so easily on our towers, it's a great way to experiment with vegetables. That's what we're doing here. We are trying to teach you how to eat different vegetables that we can grow on the tower. And I never ate so many vegetables in my life as I do now. And I'm just really, really enjoying all of the flavors that we're hitting on. 
So if you have questions about our tower, call us because it grows 30% uh, more produce and it goes three times faster and it's, um, it circulates its water 100%. So you're using less water than a regular garden. So it's just a really good product to have. And you can grow it indoors also. You don't even have to grow it outdoors. We grow a lot of indoor things. Our lettuces we keep inside because our weather here is so hot. We're hitting 100 degrees today. So obviously cold weather vegetables won't go out there. Now, do you have to know about gardening to do this? No. I did not the first summer I threw towers outside. I put lettuce on it and I didn't realize lettuce wouldn't grow in the heat. These are all learning curves, guys. We all have them and I'm learning right along with the best of them. But boy, we've been doing this and we've learned a lot and we are really enjoying the process. Plus I have Rick here. He's It's like his um, morning routine to go out and take care of our towers. And it's he just comes in and tells me all the things he found on the tower and you, all the surprise vegetables. So it's so much fun to have. Um, so next week, um, I'm gonna try to do something with tomatoes, with canning, if I can figure that out, not taking up a whole bunch of time on the air. I think we can. And then um, this week, you guys stay cool because it is hotter than heck here. And um, we are just trying to stay inside or in the pool to stay cool. So, and see you next week. You guys stay safe and stay out of the heat. Bye for now. Bye. Okay, I can't wait to yeah. taste it. Very good. I like that. Mm -hmm. I love the crunch of the toast. Yeah. With it. Yeah. Oh. And, and it said you can use um, kale, spinach, or mustard greens too. Oh. Okay, give me another high five. This is too good. And yes, it needed the lemon. I love it. I'm going to have to 